work with this population, you begin to realize just how uh, certain it is that they are people who are in the middle of change. And yet, a sentence of life without parole is a sentence that was really reserved for people who will never change, people who are beyond hope. Their capacity for change is so small that we can give them a permanent sentence of death in prison. We don't let kids do things that we let adults do. We don't let them drive, we don't let them smoke, we don't let them drink, we don't let them make important decisions. We, they can't get medical care without consent of parents, they can't join the military. It's not honest to say that you're an adult if you make a really bad decision at 13 and 14, uh, but you're not in all these other areas of life. I think our enthusiasm for punishment, our indifference to redemption and rehabilitation and change has made it possible for us to stop thinking about some kids. For a long time, behavior scientists have known that teenagers are different than adults. We can look at how the brain is functioning uh, in real time to see how people are, um, respond to certain stimuli. What we see in this uh, video, it's a compilation of 52 different brain scans that were done on 13 individuals from the ages of 4 to the age of 22. As the brain is becoming bluer, we see the maturation of the brain um, as, as we mature into adulthood. Juveniles' brains are actually different than an adult brain. Unless you have become a victim, then you don't know what we're going through. I would like to put it all behind me, but I think I know why God led me to do what I'm doing today to let me see that even though I didn't get the true justice that I think Gwinnett deserved, I see so many others that just got nothing. We're not necessarily all just for throwing everybody in the slammer, but once you have committed an adult crime and you are certified as an adult, you have committed an adult crime and you have got to pay for it. First day I got here and I got off that bus, bro. They was already on me, off the rip, you know. Him, they picked me out of the crowd. Him, he going straight to lock up. Even because I was so young, fresh meat. So, everybody was trying to go here and see who's going to get me first, bro. Yeah. Well, my name is Antonio Russell and we're at um, William E. Downs Correctional Facility. I was convicted for three counts of capital murder. I was 15 when I actually was sentenced to um, life without parole. If I had to do all over again, no. That would have been one of the things that I wouldn't have done. But Lord have mercy. It cost me everything. There have been a lot of youngsters after me. They came and they couldn't handle it. And they took their lives and, and had other thoughts of suicide and stuff. Where I see that I could possibly make a difference, right, or save somebody, then I'm gonna do that. I still be still beginning fights and stuff to this day. Man, leave that little boy alone. He's just a kid. Man, hey, I got life without. I ain't got nothing to lose for real, right? But if I can make a difference and possibly save, and that's what I'm going to do every time. Do I believe that you can rehabilitate a 15-year-old even for a murder? Yes, I do. Can you rehabilitate all 15-year-olds? No. What I remember of Antonio and his family, I think that he could have been. I really do believe that.
what about the victims of the crime? You know, what do you do there? There's nothing you can do to replace a loved one. You have to look at it from both sides. You have to have a practical side to it. You have to know that there are other people that are going to be looking at the other side of that, and you do have to do some of that yourself. Still, I think the age of the child should play in, even if it is a, a heinous crime. There was, I don't know, three or four of us that uh, were all going to go to the restaurant that night. It was a cold, rainy March night, and uh, I was going to go and didn't. And everyone was going to call him and didn't. And my mother was coming in from Boston that night from the airport, and they were going to go by and didn't. Uh, his ex-wife with their grandchild was going to go by that night and show him some pictures, and she didn't. My brother, uh, Danny Sledge, he was murdered by two brothers. One happened to be a juvenile, 17 years old, and the other one was 19. He was a divorced dad, and our family had eight siblings, and he was the oldest boy, so he was kind of, you know, the protector. The, you know, everybody went to him with their problems. But he gave to the ball teams. We, we fed the local football team at his restaurant. He came to all of my kids' games. He closed the restaurant to go to his kids' games. He, he loved life. He loved people. They didn't ask him, do you want to die tonight? They made that decision for him. Neither one of them received the death penalty. One received life without parole, and one received life with parole. People want the person that took their life to be given a second chance when the person gone doesn't have that second chance. And I, I just don't think it's unreasonable for them to stay in prison for their, for their crime. And I, I can't fathom why people don't understand that. It has nothing to do about revenge. I lost mine too. I lost my son. I mean, this is depressing for me to go through this stuff every, every, every single day. After Antonio got locked up, it seemed like everything just fell apart. Antonio was 15 years old when they had put him on a bus and put, took him to a prison. He was a child. He was, you know, he, had, he was in a child way. I mean, imagine what, you know, what that did to him. My brother was 15 when he went in there. I mean, he was so young. He's been in jail a long time, most of his childhood. I'm praying for my son. I miss my son. I miss him. And I want my son to come home. I know I want him home. I may be a, maybe a little older, but I'm still going to know Antonio. Every mama knows their child. <laughs> After 15 solid years, if that individual does not see a ray of hope, at that point in their lives, they actually become a burden to the state. And what I mean by that is all hope is gone. They began to not take care of themselves anymore. Their hygiene goes down because there's no hope. What we're looking at is, is trying to give that person the opportunity to go before the parole board and present their case. The key here is that their sentence has been removed from life without to life with the possibility of parole. They're going to die in prison for something that they did as a very young person. The law does not recognize that people can change and regret what they did and, and they're not eligible for parole. I think a juvenile knows better than to kill someone, I don't care what their age is. I'm often surprised at the resistance people have uh, to um, imagining uh, redemption, change, rehabilitation for people who have fallen. Everyone has a soul. And you know, God wants us all to be good and He wants us all in heaven. So, you know, that's what you do. You pray that they do change. I, I live in this little world, live and work here and affect people here. So their little world is prison and they can live and affect people in prison.
to say to any child you're fit only to die in prison is cruel. I deserve a second chance. I want a second chance.